inconsolable. I got my first into gaming, like my very, very first one, on an old DOS PC my dad used to have in our flat. This is an old piece of shit. Uh, basically had the same processing power nowadays as a Fitbit watch. And um, you could run a pretty mean game of Asteroid off of it. I remember briefly my dad trying to explain to my two, three-year-old self how to use DOS. And I kind of got the hang of it, but I remember nothing now. Um, I think at the height of it, we could load a floppy disk with like a DuckTales game on it. Kind of um, really, really jaggy graphics. Commander Keen type stuff. Um, And then for I think the next seven or eight years until sometime in the early 2000s, I got a hold of a PlayStation, like the original PS. And that was the beginning of something. I had a copy of Crash Bandicoot, the original Crash Bandicoot. And some kind of uh, military-style helicopter game. I think it was called Soviet Strike or something along those lines. Pretty boring, but it was fun enough. I didn't really pay it too much attention. Um, and that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Because around that time, games had started to get really fleshed out in a way that I didn't think they were before. Um, a lot of games, I think, prior to this, like the NES era... With a few exceptions, mind you, I'll grant you that, but a lot of them were just either sort of franchise grabs or difficulty traps, like Ninja Gaiden was effectively just one great big punch yourself in the dick simulator, a la Dark Souls, but without the storytelling or the artwork or everything else that makes Dark Souls amazing. But uh, back to the beginning. So games really start to come into their own around the PS1 era. Uh, Crash Bandicoot had an amazing franchise, with Humble Beginnings up to number three, where they just basically, Naughty Dog had, for what seems, an unlimited budget and creative control, and that was amazing. And then there were a few really odd hidden gems in there, like uh, there was a game called Silent Bomber, which was generic anime fare for terms of story, but was just a really interesting take on gameplay with Lots of fast-paced dashing, bomb control, a really unique attacking system as far as it goes, and some really goddamn nails bosses. I remember it got like mediocre as hell reviews at the time, but a lot of people view it now as like a nostalgia factor game and a half. And that went on for a good few years until PS2 came along. Now, I the first game I got with PS2 was Devil May Cry, and I will devote an entire episode alone to explain some of my love affair with the Devil May Cry series, the rise and fall as it were, because there's a, a whole whole backstory to that, but needless to say, Devil May Cry 1 was the most amazing goddamn game I'd ever played on a PS2 ever, stylish as hell, and just, it really set the tone for my relationship with PS2, I, I think I ended up having like two or three memory cards just ram-packed with games, and game saves, and... Back then when backwards compatibility was a thing, I could still play all my PS1 games, no problem. Fantastic. I think I still banged out a good few hours of Final Fantasy VIII on it, because I just had some stuff I wanted to play through. Never really got around to finishing it. That being said, PS2 was just a platform. See, one of the favorite things that happened to me in my console sort of journey was online gameplay, and PS2 due to technology in the market at the time, didn't have that outside of Japan, which led to some really, really bad missed opportunities. I would absolutely love it if Capcom got their shit together and did a network-available remake of uh, Resident Evil Outbreak with the co-op function, because that is one of those games that was just made to be played co-op but never happened. Um, there's one other game that is absolutely made for co-op, and I believe that was Republic uh, Star Wars Clone... Commando, Republic Commando. You have four, like three separate characters, all the voice dialogue, but it's only a single player campaign. Absolute waste of talent. Anyway, but PS2, again, fantastic. Everyone has a favorite. Mine still was Devil May Cry. Nothing else gave me as much satisfaction as completing the hell out of the game like seven or eight times in a row just for the amazing boss fights. I mean, how many games greet you in level, I think, two, maybe three, with a tarantula made out of lava? Anyway, so along comes Xbox 360, and the first game I got with that wasn't groundbreaking, but it did come with the all-important, 
online multiplayer. Now, first game I got was Gears of War, which was, it was pretty damn amazing at the time. Graphics were tops. It was a very interesting, very gritty shooter. Had amazing cover mechanics for the time, which is now like industry standard for all waist-high cover shooters ever. But what was most important is it had a really fun and pretty pretty well put together multiplayer, which is what started me in like my real love of online gaming and team gaming. So I was really into that without the uh, sort of 40 quid subscription per year, which sucked, but hey-ho. But what was really important that happened to me during the time of Xbox 360 was I started to fall out of love with gaming. Now, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I had a real bad period uh, around the time Bioshock came out where I was just completely disinterested. I felt my love for gaming just start to die and nothing was cool or interesting. And then I spent a day and a half playing Bioshock from start to end at a friend's place. And just like that, my faith was restored. I can't ever play Bioshock again, the first one. I, it, something about that, there's a magic that just clung to me of my initial playthrough. Uh, how absolutely enthralled I was with the, the artwork and the depth and the tension, and the gunfights. I can never recreate that. It's uh, It's kind of... It's been burnt out for me. But that was really important because I don't know where I would be in terms of like my love for gaming and media. If I hadn't had that experience, maybe I would have gone on a completely different path. Uh, Maybe I'd be an anime buff or something. Fuck knows. And after that, a couple of years on, I got hold of a PS3 and I pretty much just bought that console to play Infamous. I love Infamous. And the only thing I love more than Infamous is Infamous 2. Never really got around to playing the new one, but Infamous is one of the only games that made lightning powers seem fun to me. I've just never really gotten on with it, but it was just a master stroke. And I was so sad at the time because when Infamous came out, all I had was a 360. And the closest we had was Prototype, which just was not nearly as polished and fleshed out and amazing. It's still like arcadey trash fun, but it wasn't the actual amazing story and character driven experience that uh infamous was it's um it's kind of like comparing kind of like comparing call of duty to the last of us though there is no game to my knowledge that is as good as the last of us anyway that's enough for this part honorable mentions go to gamecube which is where i spent at least a solid year playing super smash brothers Melee, because that shit was amazing, yo. Um, I think at least one Baldur's Gate on GameCube as well. That was fantastic. And my intro to PC gaming, which will be part two of this, because this is going to be a two-parter, possibly a three-parter. Anyway, good luck and good night. Bye. Baby, don't you threat to leave me. You getting stressed, I said take this shit easy.